Hey everybody, welcome in and thanks for joining us. Today, Jason and I are gonna talk you through some natural stone installation techniques. We're really hoping that we can give you the tips and tricks and tools of the trade to help you pull off a job like this one. So I know you kind of look at it, it's a, obviously a beautiful home, it's a beautiful project. And we know some of you might be a little bit intimidated taking on this kind of work. We've heard of guys potentially subbing this out to stonemasons and things like that. And we just wanna make sure you have the confidence to tackle this and, and add this to your your sales presentations and your tool belt. So on the topic of tools, Jay, what are some of the things that we're gonna need that a landscaper might typically not have in their truck to pull off a job like that? Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> I have a few different trowels here, a V-notch trowel and a square notch trowel, and they're used for different parts of the installation process. A scoop or a margin trowel. I got a grout float here and a sponge clean off the grout and a good quality mixing drill and mixing paddle and a pail for your um, for your mortar mixing and for your water and here's a pro tip that uh, I really like to share with people I have uh, measured out the amount of water I need for my mortar once and then I marked it and I cut a hole in the pail in order so that the next time I'm uh, mixing up my mortar I'm gonna just dump a garden hose in here and uh, fill it up and it can't overfill. And I'm gonna get consistently the right amount of water every time, which is gonna make my mortar really consistent. And that's very important to me. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, it's also good if there's several laborers on the site, maybe you have different guys mixing mortar. Uh, it's not only gonna save you time, but as Jason mentioned, it's gonna give you a nice consistent mix. It is really important that you follow the manufacturer's instructions on the bag, um, especially if it's a product that maybe you're not as familiar with. Many of the products we're gonna be discussing today are Ardex products. Um, that's who our partnership is with here locally, but you'll be able to reach out to your contractor services representative or your territory manager, and they'll be able to steer you in the right direction if that's not available in your region. Uh, however, Jason and I will highlight the important points of each of those products so that it's easy for you to find something comparable. So Jay, let's dive right into the install now, and our best practice is wet set on a concrete base. We believe that this is the best for longevity and for stability. This is going to be the number one best way to install your natural stone. So the install method we're discussing is only going to work on a calibrated stone. All the stone we sell here at Unilock Natural Stone is calibrated. And it's really important that you're using a calibrated stone for this install technique. Uh, Jay, if we're installing wet set on a concrete base, does that mean we need to pour a new pad or is this something that maybe we can work with what's already existing on our homeowner's property? Yeah, not necessarily. As long as the slab is uh, structurally sound and not subject to frost heaving or any other type of heaving, it's good to use. I mean, a lot of guys are cladding over porches and that's, that's totally, very common. totally fine. Yep. Um, the only thing is sometimes uh, slabs are sloped and maybe you want to do a more level patio. You can use a ramping mortar. So I like to use Ardex AM100 it's a great ramping mortar. A ramping mortar is a mortar that you can set a slope to and it'll hold that slope while it's wet. And uh, the AM100, you can go as thin as one quarter inch all the way to as thick as one and a quarter inches. And if that's not uh, enough of a repair for you, you can do it in lifts. So you just let that first segment dry and then you can go another one and a quarter inches on top of that. Okay, so once we've prepared our concrete and we're good to go there, we still need to apply some kind of a crack isolation membrane, and we also wanna make sure we're applying a waterproofing membrane. Now, again, we're gonna talk a little bit about Ardex products, and SK-175 is gonna offer a little bit of both, um, but how would we apply that, and, and give us a little bit more detail if you can, Jay. Sure, yeah, I'm gonna actually demo it for you, but here's a piece of the SK-175, and it's basically just a vapor barrier with a bit of weaved uh, fabric on either side to, to allow the mortar, it to bite into the mortar. So I'm gonna use this piece of concrete board to uh, represent my concrete slab. So first I'm gonna scoop out some mortar and spread it across, and I'm really trying to embed it into the slab, so getting a bit of pressure down. Want to get a good spread, good coverage. And now I'm going to use my V-notch trowel. I'm going to start making sure I spread it out over the entire area I'm working on. We 
may notice that I'm uh, traveling, traveling them all in the same direction. And uh, that's important to allow the air to escape. So now we got the Ardex SK-175, which is basically a piece of vapor barrier with some uh, weaved fabric on either side to allow it to bite into the mortar. So I put that down on, my, uh, on the spot there and I used my grout float or any other um, flat edge trowel. And I really want to push it into the mortar to embed it in. And you're pushing all the air bubbles to the outside. And the crack isolation portion of this is it allows the slab and the natural stone on top to move independently of one another. So if you get a one, up to one eighth of an inch crack in your slab, that will not migrate to the surface. It's going to stop right at the crack isolation barrier. And the waterproof portion of this, if you have any uh, moisture underneath that wants to wick up into the natural stone, it's going to be prevented by this layer. And any water wicking into the stone could cause um, efflorescence stains and other unsightly stains. Yep. So Jay, when we're on a job site and we're doing this on a much larger scale, you know, obviously you're not going to be seating this at an arm's length. Is that okay? Is that suitable just to walk on? Are you, are you using that surface now sure. to kind of set yourself and, and be able to reach all the areas? Yeah, it's fine to walk on. Um, a best practice would be to wait for it to set up before you install your natural stone though. And the reason being is that these, um, these modified mortars have such a great initial bite that if you needed to lift up one of your slabs in order to add or uh, remove some mortar, it may actually break the bond between the SK-175 and the mortar underneath it. And another good point about this Ardex product is that you can use the same mortar underneath and on top. Some of the other uh, crack isolation membranes out there have a limitation to use a non-modified mortar underneath and a modified on top. This one just makes it easier because you're only mixing one bucket of mortar to install both things or one type of mortar on site. Perfect, so now we've set the base and we're ready to apply our natural stone. So uh, for those of you who are more used to unit paving, this would basically be, we've done our base prep and now we need to prepare a screed layer. So Jay, what are, what's going on now? Where, what are our next steps? The next step would be to apply mortar onto the SK-175 and in the same fashion, I'm gonna spread it out and I'm really giving it a bit of pressure to push it into the surface we get a good bond. Yeah, so to, to speak in terms of, you know, if people who are more familiar with unit paving, we've kind of prepared the base at this point, and now you're doing a bit of a screed layer to be able to set the stone. Exactly, that's what the notches in the trowel are for. They give you the exact amount of uh, mortar that you need underneath each piece. So I'm just gonna start to uh, spread it out. Jay, this might be a good spot to mention that you know, it's important to understand what direction your lines are going to go in and what way you're combing the mortar. So in order to figure out how you're going to comb them on your base, it's probably important to know how they're going to go on your stone so that they're going in the same direction. Great point. Great point. And the reason we're, uh, in, we're going to comb the ball in the same direction is because um, it allows the air to escape. And what I think Nick was referring to there is that if I know which orientation my piece of natural stone is going to go in, I want to comb the trowels in the shortest dimension of the piece and that allows the air to escape in the, uh, the shortest distance. So the next step would be to apply the um, mortar to the back of the natural stone and that's called back buttering. So the same idea, scoop some mortar out and spread it onto the back want a good bond at every stage. So it's really important to do this uh, sort of a scratch coat. And I'm gonna start spreading it out onto my piece. And then my final comb will be in the one direction, same as on my slab. We're looking for about 95% coverage for the back of the natural stone to get the kind of support that you need. So I'm gonna pick my natural stone piece up, place it onto my slab, and with a pressure and a bit of a twisting motion, I'm trying to collapse those columns. 
Now, Jay, in the field, you'd also probably have a level at arm's reach. And oh, if you sure. do need to level the stone up a little bit, or if you need to make a couple adjustments, uh, again, as Jason mentioned, the mortars do have a lot of bite, but there's nothing from preventing you from just lifting a, a corner and adding a little bit more mortar if you need to do some leveling. Uh, and you're gonna wanna do that stone by stone. Yeah, and even a mallet would be handy here. For, for sure. sure. So once that's set up and it's uh, probably the next day, you're gonna come back to do some grouting. And you're gonna use a grout float similar to this one. And once you mix your grout, you're gonna apply it into the joints at a 45 degree angle. And you're really trying to push that grout down so that it gets to the base of the joint. And it'll even go underneath the stone and fill up some of the void space if you get it down far enough. So Jay, it's interesting. You're, you're mentioning grout and specifically uh, the grout we've used here today is gonna be Ardex FL. And the key point about this is that it's a polymer modified grout. So if this isn't available in your territory, you do wanna make sure that you're using a modified grout. It's just a lot more flexible. It's giving you a lot of the benefits of a polymeric sand and a traditional grout in one product. Uh, and that's really important for a variety of different reasons. Well, I mean, the flexibility allows your project to have a little bit of movement without it failing. And uh, also grout, uh, polymer modified grouts are stain resistant, water resistant, freeze thaw resistant, mildew resistant, and they come in a wide range of colors. It is a good practice uh, to test it in an inconspicuous area or on a scrap piece to make sure you're not gonna uh, apply a stain, like you can't remove the stain from the natural stone from the colors in the grout. So if you find that it is staining it, you could seal your natural stone project before grouting and that'll help clean it up. We have another presentation on how to seal natural stone that you might want to check out. It's got some good information in there. For sure. So, you know, it's also important to Jay, you're, you're cleaning as you're going. We're not going to leave the grout on the surface. You know, you're going to have your handy sponge next to you and, and you're cleaning as you're going, working in as small an area as possible, just to make sure that the surface is staying as tidy as it can it's be. It's important to have clean water and clean sponges constantly at your side. For sure. So we've kind of rolled through things fairly quickly. Um, Jay, why don't we kind of just sort of peel back and as you can see on the screen behind me, we've got the various layers that, that Jason's discussed, but let's walk it through once more just as a little bit of a recap. Sure. So on our display here, we have our concrete slab and then our uh, V-notch trowel combed. And I applied that with the V-notch trowel on the backside first in order to um, smooth it and get it a good embedment onto the slab. And then I'm going to comb it all in one direction, just like that. And then the second layer is the SK-175. And same thing as in the demo, we applied that on top of that mortar and we used our grout float or another flat trowel to really embed that. And we're pushing the air bubbles to the outside. So sort of starting in the middle and then pushing it to the outside. And that's when we grab our uh, square notch trowel and using the back end again, pushing it into the slab on the SK-175 and then combing it all in the same direction and that's uh, to allow the air to escape. Then we move on to our piece of natural stone and we back butter it and then in the same direction as on the slab and then we install it with a slight pressure and twisting motion. And another good tip is when you're installing your next piece beside let's say your first piece and you're trying to establish your joint width, it's a good idea to go too tight and pull away from that other piece. If you start too wide and you have to shrink that gap you have a tendency to push that mortar back up into the joint and that's just more cleaning for you and uh, less efficiency yeah absolutely so jay with that let's just hit on a couple more quick bullet points here concrete must be structurally sound if not you can use a ramping mortar like an ardex uh, am100 we absolute must to have that crack isolation as well as a waterproofing membrane um you're going to travel your uh your mortar, your modified mortar right over top, back butter your slab and down it goes. That's correct. So if there's anything that you might want a little bit more information on, or if there's anything that, you know, you feel like maybe we've moved too quickly, I really encourage you to copy this URL down on the screen here. This is our natural stone installation guide. We're the only manufacturer who has one, which is something that we're very proud of. It's available at unilock.com. You can download it. It's a free download. You can print this off, throw a copy in your truck. It's got everything that we've spoken about here today, as well as some other little uh, tips and tricks or different install considerations. So I really recommend that you grab a copy of this. And, and you know, like I said, print it off, throw it in the truck and have it at your disposal. 
So with that, Jay, that pretty much wraps it up for today. We really hope that, you know, we've given you the confidence to try to take on a beautiful backyard like the one pictured here, and that this is something that you can really add to your sales portfolio. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks very really much. Really appreciate it.